that's what they've told us that's happened. But if this whole thing is a documentary and recreation, then for all we know, the floating aspect was added to it. You're saying that was a recreation? Or re- recreation? <laughs> it's recreational I'm saying floating. Like, <laughs> a recreational floating? Welcome, horrible people, to the Horrible Opinions Podcast, where there's some horrible shit and some dirt. <laughs> and as always, <laughs> I'm your birds or drones who recharge while sitting on power lines host, Penny. I'm your Dan. I'm all. I'm your Daniel. <laughs> that's great. I'm your Crystal Quartz Collection, Ryan. Oh. Oh, and that's right. If you haven't guessed it yet, this week we're talking about 2022's There's Something in the Dirt. Oh, I was going to do Something! This is called Something in the Dirt. We're going to talk about that because somebody's got to do it. And yeah, I know other people have, but sometimes we also got to be somebody. And that's us today. We're somebodies because in this universe, we matter. No. 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 Nope. No. 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 Oh, shit. Well, if we don't, then Daniel, give me a synopsis as why as why I don't, we don't matter. Okay, synopsis for the movie. Here we go. Wind chimes. Ding 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 ding. Two idiots observe a supernatural <laughs> occurrence, and rather than call in any intelligent people to help them investigate, uh, proceed to do them so to proceed to investigate themselves. Fueled by conspiracy theories, a desperate need for divine purpose, and impaired thinking. We could have we could have done the same uh, idea by I feel sick. Oh, well, hey neighbor, you look like you feel sick. Boy, that's weird. We could just WebMD all this shit, and we'll just take care of it. It'll be fine. It's cancer and lupus. What is he going on about, Daniel? I'm just. It's the same thing. It's like what, what he said, are you like, going on about? What? What I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is like okay, like Daniel said, they didn't call in any okay, experts. They okay. went and did oh, all their own. Okay. I'm research like so this is like you might as well be doing your own medical care calling what they did research is quite the stretch they documented what more do you want they attempted to document they couldn't even fucking do that i suggested we watch this because when i saw the trailer the way the trailer was presented i was thinking this was gonna be some kind of we discover a supernatural phenomenon anomaly in this area and it has broader repercussions throughout the town and it drives us insane and kills us some kind of like cosmic horror we looked into the universe and now our mind is destroyed this turned out to be kind of that but not no broader uh, repercussions of the occurrence Let's just start talking well, he lives about in this. Those shitty apartments. What is this? Okay, is that Daniel's new hairstyle? Yeah, well, I love it if it is. I I think so. For Levi, yeah, I think you could pull it off, buddy. <laughs> I would I would refer to Levi as buddy, buddy. Let's see. We get a loud ass door. We get a sick ashtray. We get a don't write on the walls. How do you guys feel about fractals? I oh, fucking love them. I love them. I drew them in my book. Big time. Don't. What if you do a thing? What if I summon a demon oh, or something? Shit. I don't know. Guys, guys, there's triangles everywhere. I'm seeing triangles everywhere. Goddamn space ghosts. Coast to coast, baby. We got our we got we got we got our uh, our burnout, our California burnout Levi, who has moved into a new apartment that is all shitty. There's a fucking Hold on. mold on the ceiling. Time there's- out. You're wearing the same shirt from yesterday, and this bothers me. You mean the same shirt from last night? Mm-hmm. My sleep shirt? Yeah. I'm still I'm still sleeping, dog. It's got a, Continue. It's got a starry night, though, so it's kind of theme-related. Space Jam is cosmic horror. You're not wrong. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the Space Jam. There's a, let's see, there's mold on the ceiling or a black spot or something. There's this weird, like, quartz almost looking, like, glass, like, what the fuck thing that I'm like, that looks like a fucking bad, like, ashtray that someone tried to make. And then there's, like, a closet with a loud-ass door that has just writing on the walls. We see some vague-looking math stuff and, you know, geometry, all that shit. And then he looks out the window and sees another neighbor, John, 
out there smoking and thinks, oh, cigarette bum senses activate. <laughs> Smokers can recognize that another smoker very quickly, I think. The cigarette is typically what yeah, does yeah, it. Yeah, true. <laughs> he was oh, smoking. Well. <laughs> now that you mention it. Skateboarders can often recognize other skateboarders. By the skateboard <laughs> they're carrying. The skate- yeah, okay. By the skateboard, yeah. But it, it was funny, though. Like, he goes and, like, runs out the apartment door. We don't see him for a second. And then we get a shot of a helicopter taking off. I'm like, <laughs> oh, that's why you can't afford a good apartment. He owns a helicopter. I gotta take this helicopter to get down to you, bud. <laughs> it's a helicopter, but it's that's noticeably a CGI helicopter. That's not a real helicopter. Okay. It's fine. It's fine. Look, but that got red on you. Tipped me off to something that was happening. I just didn't know what until later in the movie. What oh, what did it tip you off to? That once I learned that these scenes had been recreated, then I'm like, "Oh, that's why the planes, the helicopters, the the stuff in the sky when it's this footage, that's stuff that the CGI artist has put in." Oh, neat. Oh, you think that was part of their recreations? Yes. CGI. Yeah. Some of it. Some of the air, definitely some of the airplanes. That's your question. How much of the movie that we're watching is supposed to be part of their retelling and how much of it is us seeing what's going on? Do you think the whole thing in the end is just us watching the retelling? No. no. I think there's there's the movie, which is their reshoots, where it, where it has like really good camera fo- stock. So the opening is reshoots, okay? There's the home movie footage where that's what they actually shot at the time. And what and most of some of that got destroyed. And then there's a documentary around this or within it. So there's like right. three different things happening. Well, there's like this really good shot that they use like in the preview picture of this movie. And it's only on the screen for like a flash in the movie. It's a shot where uh, Levi is like has like a long stick at the closet. And there's like fire coming out of the closet. And then like John's like jumping up in the air with the camera all excited. That's a recreation. Yeah, yeah, that's a recreation, but I just love, like, that's the shot they use. That is, like, literally a split second. And I was like, that's such a cool shot. But I didn't really, like, I would have enjoyed the hell out of that scene actually happening. I think if this movie actually did the cool stuff for the, re- the recreation, they would have made a better movie. I disagree. Because it would have been, it would have been the ridiculous, I, I think it would have been a little less, well, okay, that's the thing. I'm, I'm on the fence. I both like this movie and don't like this movie. I could see myself watching it again, but you guys bother me. Not, I think they're supposed to bother me. Not since little baby Joffrey have I hated a character more. So you hate like this. You hate watch this. No, 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 no. Not hate a movie. Hate a character. Which character did you hate? Uh, What's the other guy who's not me? John, the wedding photographer. John. I fucking hate John. I hate everything about John. But here's the thing, if, if you hate a character that much, and there's two characters, uh-huh. you probably hate the movie. That that makes no sense. No, no, you're supposed to hate him. You, no, he doesn't hate, he hates you what are. the character is doing in the movie. He doesn't hate the character. It's a good character. It's a, it's a, it's a good character. Well performed. Like, no, it's a great, it, yeah, right, no, a, it really yeah, I understand is. what you're saying, Daniel. I didn't think what I was saying was that complicated. No, not really. It's all complicated. That We've decided everything <laughs> in this movie is I've, complicated. I've decided that I'm going to go one step further than Daniel and say everything in this movie is made up. Okay, I will go a half a step back from Ryan sure. and say only stuff that you see from John's perspective is made up because he's a pathological liar. And so what I wanted to do but didn't do because I like sleep, I was going to rewatch it and then note down everything that he sees and then just discard it entirely. Well, it's important because John's the first one to see the light refracting off the uh, reflecting off the uh, right. And that that happens. That's a thing that. Well, sure. I thought, oh, okay. so I'm like, "Mm, maybe he's just stoned a little bit and the light playing off this ashtray onto the wall is just no, you know, think, blowing his mind at the moment something is something is definitely happening well once levi walks but then in he, and it starts levitating then, well then gravity starts happening light only happens to john gravity only happens to levi that's what they claim what they claim you guys want to have an autumnal goth wedding yes i think that uh, i mean i just want an autumnal goth anything how old is uh, too old to uh, turn into one of these goth creatures of the night? Dead. Never too Never late. Never too late. Dead is too old? Uh, if you're dead, dead that'd be the old. only too old. And even then, I think, you know, depending on... You've probably hit yeah, peak, that's peak goth. goth right there. So weekend at Bernie's. All right, at- I'm going to move. 
I'm gonna move to LA and become like There's a There's so many types of golf. A pastel golf. Okay. I like this that they had the spot marked where the grandpa flew out the window and died. And then I found out he lied, but it was funny. It's like, yep, sanded like in the spot. And you look down, it's like a square with an X in it. It's like, ah, that's great. John tells Levi that, yeah, someone died in there. That's why it's been empty for 10 years. But it was a fake, fake ass dead grandpa story. John's got a six scooter and Dave is hungry. No, hungry Dave. That's a squirrel. I forgot there's a third character. There, there is a, <laughs> there's, hungry there's Dave. a couple of characters. That one of them is hungry. Don't, Dave. Don't make eye. Yeah, don't make oh, eye. What's contact gonna happen if you make eye Dave. contact? Yeah, he's, he's gonna violent. come at you, and then it's home movie footage of the squirrel. Hungry Dave. We got some like Russian nesting doll wind chimes, which aren't important, but they keep making them seem like they're it's, important. It's okay. Here's why they're kind of important because they're nesting dolls. Because it's the I I know where you, you're all going. All right, Daniel. You it's da- it's just going down the rabbit hole. You open one. There's another one inside. You open that one, there's another one inside. Levi has the correct title for what this should have been, was the door that wouldn't shut. The documentary within this movie, that should have been the title because that is essentially what they are doing. No matter how many times they try to figure this out, allegedly, or close the book on it, or shut the door, there's always one more thing that comes up that they can't do it. That's a shit title. Nothing to do with what they're doing. <laughs> D- dumb something in the dirt is nothing to do with what they're doing. What was the thing he said before that? It was in something, the something in the something light. In the light. The, in the light, yeah. Yeah, that was a perfect title. No, there's nothing the, in the, the light. Door that wouldn't... The door that wouldn't close, that's a stupid title. Never You're a should reptile, have said it. John. I can't You're believe the you said something slithering so dumb. in the attic. <laughs> God, I love that. Oh, mm. that, that, oh, the payoff of that. Oh, my God. Uh, and I will be playing the part of John in this episode. <laughs> can I be, I don't know, can I be each one of the experts they pull on who that just seems done with the whole process and doesn't want to be there and corrects them when they start saying You're- things? Dr. Rita Miller, chemist. Uh, her PhD is actually in music theory. Oh, but that's actually oh, a good uh, a good PhD for them to have because music is all math. Everything's all math if you want to say it. <laughs> oh, it's all about equations. So okay, so they they see this. Let's assume this is they meet and they do see something that produces light and maybe this ashtray levitates in the living room. From there, they decide they're going to document this experience and maybe make a documentary which they can sell to, what is it, Netflix for some millions of bucks? Yeah, tens of millions is low. That's what okay. John thinks. Look, yeah, these are John's two California... fucking stupid. Oh my God. It's, it's nothing worse than a stupid person who thinks they're smart. So uh, if you've been listening this far, I don't know why. Yeah, John and Levi are both not successful people, okay? These apartments are shitty. Levi, you know... Levi has an interesting past. And John is just a angry, divorced, wedding photographer, gay man. Hey, he's a he's a he's in a, uh, a cult, too. Apocalyptic cult. You say cult, and he would say just religious organization, I believe. And then I would ask you, what's the difference... A cult will isolate Pass you from everybody codes. else and take your money and have sex with your wife. He doesn't have a wife. That's true. We'll try to have sex with his husband, ex-husband at this point. Husband's though. already left. Divorced. You're right. So what has isolated. he got to lose? I don't know. Just join the cult. Now, join the... Well, he did a bit. Maybe a bit. Levi does a stunk telling a story, six story about him spearfishing like a, a the lobster. Danny DeVito lobster. runs off with his... Yeah. And lobsters are intelligent. That's why I won't eat a lobster. Do you ever have uh, people, like at work, who just tell you random stories for no fucking reason? I think... All the time. I mean, hi, Kenny. I I just realized Kenny is that person. No, there's a reason. There's always a reason. What's the reason for the story? Uh, He saw a squirrel and he thought lobster. Yeah. Great story. Thank you for sharing that. I don't trust squirrels. Put that on record in general. So them tell me about Hungry Dave and his violence. I was already like, I didn't trust him. John's grandma runs a plant nursery and he goes and sees her. That's not important other than the fact that she gives John a plant that John then in turn gives to Levi because John gives all his husband's ex-husband's shit out of the garage to Levi to, to furnish his apartment. So this is how they've quickly kind of formed a bond. He's helped them out, like moving in and whatnot. John just seems like a somewhat nice guy right now. He hasn't gone full fucking crazy asshole yet. Levi is on the registered sex offender list when John's trying to find his contact info to get a hold of him later. It's a horrible bosses situation. Yeah, it's a classic. I, w- I had to pee. I peed on a wall. It was a daycare. Yeah. 
Classic. These are not successful no, men. No, that set red flags off in my head because normally that will not get you put on a sex offender registry. It does in the cinematic universe. It did in Horrible Bosses. I had to go look up a whole bunch of statutes to see how in the world this could possibly get you on there. Uh, and even then, I'm like, mm, I don't think so, especially because this this kind of offense would carry jail time. So you would have a at least have a public defender assigned to your case who would tell you all this shit anyway. Anyway, I understand well, he was on parole, movie logic. Even by California standards? Wah, wah, I'm a lawyer. Wah, wah. I mean, the only thing I could come up with is be like sexual misconduct involving a child, which he would have to have like knowingly exposed himself to a to a child, uh, which did not occur in this situation. He left some details out. It wasn't the wall of a daycare. It was a fence to the playground of a daycare, and he pissed right on them kids. <laughs> that could have been a necessary detail he left out, yes. Yeah, well, he leaves out details. That would change it a little bit. The point of me saying all this up front is just to get out of the way why they're so desperate for this to actually work and they keep fucking putting up with each other and putting up with the bullshit instead of just... They need money. Although John's rich, so... Levi gave the cigarette back. I gave a cigarette back to John. I was not expecting that. I thought Levi was going to be continuously bumming things. No, the person who bums things is John because he never replaces the beer. Right. It kind of They do a flip-flop of who's the bigger, like, I don't know suck on the other one and it, it ends up being big time john we know about our men now ashtray floats reflects light we got a ghost this is our big ticket out of here let's uh let's do a documentary sell it for millions we're gonna be yeah it's gonna be great we're gonna have proof we're the first ones are gonna have proof john has the art of war on his coffee table because he's smart he also has iron ran i believe atlas shrugged yeah atlas shrugged always a good sign then we get some exi- existentials, you know, big talk where, you know, our lives didn't amount to shit, but that ghost just validated our existence. I'm summarizing. Sure, you, you, this movie's two hours long. You gotta. It's a lot of out there bullshit that they say these things to make themselves seem smart as characters. And the whole time I'm like, you guys are really dumb, aren't you? Well, it's the... This is... Oh, go ahead, Daniel. This is why you don't give... You should have to be able to pass a test to have access to the internet. Oh, but you can't get to take the test unless you get on the internet. That was the test. You just failed. Congratulations. How you how do you get on the internet to take the test? Yep. Can't, you can't you can't figure it out, you don't get, get on. It. Sorry. But you just said I'm not allowed. Yep. But here's the thing. I also don't understand YouTube. <laughs> I don't I don't want to mess with those. It's all about clickbait and all algorithms and having some sexy girl in a, in the um what's that called? The 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 gif, thumbnail. the JPEG, the thumbnail. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about I don't know how to I don't know how to do this. I don't understand YouTube. And I was like, uh, or podcast. Well, the podcast, the, they want to capture, they want to visually capture what is going on. I'm going to, okay, I will, let's, oh God, even if I give them that what, there are some home movie footage of the crystal levitating, but then there, so that's, but the, which is separate from the recreation footage. So even if we give them that, everything else they present after that is just stuff they've made up. Which is really going to make it even more likely that we don't believe the stuff you didn't make up was real. It's a problem because, okay, so you've observed this happening once. And now you're like, oh, shit, we got to spice this up. We got to flim flam. Right. This gets us to the... Is that the technical term? It is a technical term. Flim flim flam man is a technical term, yeah. Classic flim flam. Look, it's 2022 when this came out. You could have showed me just the real footage. Nobody's going to believe that. You add on the rest of the ridiculous footage, people really aren't going to believe that. Okay, let me take that back. Sane people are not going to believe any of it. Well, they're making a documentary for them. But for them, but as in like a million, as in like stupid people like them. Oh, okay, yeah. Levi was a sweet boy, okay. In the end, but John is maliciously stupid. Oh my god, it's it's he's dangerously stupid. Levi gets concerned at like pretty early on. Like, is this dangerous? Or was it John that said it's no? Levi said it is this dangerous, and I think John said no one's ever died of a demon or a ghost or whatever. We all know that's not true. I well, yeah, I we think te- I think technically that probably is true. You don't know. You don't die from a ghost. You die from like a heart attack or something that the ghost causes. What about from a whatever though? Yeah, you might die from a what? It's kind of like how in like Florida, no one was dying from COVID. They were dying from respiratory respiratory problems. <laughs> I thought you were going to say just Florida men were running rampant. Oh, they do. Snapping but... alligators in half. You know how they do. <laughs> They're doing their early research stuff. Yeah, but by research, you mean John just 
points out, I see this triangle s- spiral in the light, and now I'm seeing triangles all about town, which leads him to his book that he says he found in high school called The Geometry of Magnetism. Right, so here is one of the things where, after on the second watch, I would throw out entirely, because he's a pathological fucking liar. He's not seeing these triangles everywhere. He didn't have that book in high school. He went looking for that book and then bought it just now. Yeah, that's why Levi brings it up. Like, you buy this? He's like, well, I got a new copy when I knew we needed it. But so do you think at any point in time, John added to the the math stuff on the walls without Levi knowing? Like, because the triangles were also drawn in there, that the prism and everything. He might have. He's, he's leaving shit around. He left that snakeskin there. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Like, what is this? And even when Levi goes to pick up in the recreation shot at the beginning of the film, when Levi goes to pick up that ash, the, I'll call it the crystal ashtray, because it sounds cool, there's three piles of some kind of dark nut or ash that form a triangle, which it is centered in. And I'm sure that was made up as well. The only thing I think, because ha- the they keep talking to the, the experts so-called experts in the documentary portion of this, like, what do you think happened? And they said, we think something happened. We can't tell it, but it's hard to tell you what was bullshit and what was real. There's a piece of it that's real, but most of it is bullshit. Yeah, yeah. We get um, John's, uh, no, sorry. They're doing this. Levi, a lady shows up to talk to Levi. I feel like that's, well, at that point, I'm like, that's a parole officer. Levi says he's a volunteer. We cut to actual John giving an interview for the documentary. I think that's the first hint that what we're seeing is some, like, actual, like, we're straight up saying some of this is recreations. Are, they're, what they're doing eventually gets made in some way, shape, or form. But seeing John tells me, okay, John survives. The first expert we're introduced to is Dr. Rita Miller. Chemist. Uh, after her spiel says, like, at the end of this, it's just really sad what happened. And I'm not talking about the one that died. I'm not talking about the dead one. Did he die? Do you want to go there now or put a pin in it? I don't. I think going through this sequentially is boring and a waste of time. I have a proposal. Give me two minutes and I will run you uh-huh. through the rabbit hole that they go through in this movie of trying to connect the string on the board. They're going full Charlie <laughs> on it. All right. Yeah. There's more threads. The threads. And then if you think we missed anything, we can hit it and then just have a bigger discussion. Yeah, sure, about, sure, sure. Because uh, I have like three questions I need you to answer for I, me. I, th- I think this discussion should be what what is this movie? You know, nothing tangible. That is this movie, right? That's the. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you nailed it, Kenny. That's why it's like, mm. I mean, aside from the beginning, what what is this movie? So after they do the triangle spiral, John starts talking about the EM spectrum, that different wavelengths of light. So he's discovering, oh, there's some like infrared is happening over here that'll come back later and then they have a a scene where they have a headlamp on and doing like a a morse code with it and somehow the light in the closet is mimicking the light when they do on off with the light and then john's all like what about aliens they're so far away light years like you know it'd be at least six thousand years and and make contact and maybe maybe in this closet is the planets and the flora and fauna now how did that happen (laughs) It just go. I'm like, okay. And then there's about quartz deposits that they're finding in the house. And they bring in a geologist who is Robert Rose, an engineering geologist, who apparently they got his phone number off a gravestone uh, from another guy. And he's like, uh, no. Uh, first, they try to get him to say that quartz produces electricity. And he's like, no, quartz absolutely like, no. do not produce electricity. <laughs> quartz does nothing. And they're very common deposits. They're no problems. And at some point, you thought you should bring in another expert. And he said, yeah, I thought there was some impaired thinking going on here. So I want... <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, right? Because I don't think because John is asking the questions during those parts, and I don't know if it's he's just so thick that he's not registering that these are kind of slights and digs at him, or he's just like, yeah, right, yeah. There's a snake skin that they find because maybe a snake from another world has come through the closet portal like a poltergeist thing and is now going everywhere. John then goes back and he finds wavelengths. Some are longer, some are shorter. These are visible. He's like, oh, I've detected new ones. And then he said, oh, I did a TED talk about the 10 dimensions. And maybe this closet is a gateway because the dimensions are closing in each other. And then he finds uh, Levi while looking for the snake because he doesn't want the snake to have bitten any of the neighbors. He goes into the house. <laughs> And he starts 
start looking <laughs> underneath the house. And what does he find? He finds a tape reel and starts going, maybe this was the Pythagoreans. Maybe this was, you know, our, our favorite, the, Mo- the Moose Lodge. We've got little things sprinkled throughout all this that are like trying to hint at bigger meanings that are attached to it. Like the tape he pulls out the back of it, 1908. That's what Levi has tattooed on his knuckles. Yeah. It ends up being what's on the city planner, William Thompson, I think was the name, that uh, they're saying built the built the apartment and was in charge of building the city. So we got a Ghostbusters situation where we're, uh, oh, this whole thing is a setup, and maybe these people called the Pythagorean, uh, Pythagorean Brotherhood were involved in building this thing, and it's all one big setup to draw down... Well, I'm, I'm thinking it's shifted from ghosts to aliens. I never thought it was a ghost. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I never thought it was anything. And they're just... Uh, as I think Levi says later, like, we keep finding more threads, and they're never leading anywhere. He's... At like two or three times in the movie, he's done. He's done. Well, yeah, he he wants to move back wherever the fuck he came from and give up on his L.A. dream. I'm not entirely sure what his L.A. dream was because he never says, like, oh, I wanted to be an actor. Well, here's my thing. I think he did want to be an actor because at a certain point in this movie, I thought that this might secretly just be like a Party Down spinoff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Levi works at a bar wearing the bow tie. I would like, to, I was like, I I would like to see him in Party Down. <laughs> I think so. And I look, could you imagine him bouncing this off of uh, the, the what's sci-fi his writer? Character? Yeah. Yeah. No, I do hard sci-fi. <laughs> like, and plus, he if he's if he's on parole, I don't think he can just leave the state that easily. Oh well, yeah, he can and leave. He just, it wouldn't be good for his um, freedom. It wouldn't be good uh, for but his. He could try. His freedom. Only if he gets caught. Yeah. You know? But uh, all the other bullshit they use to fluff up their thing. The the plant that John brought Levi from his grandma was affected by the. By the radiation. Radiation, and it grows a fruit. And what's John immediately... Because I know earlier when I was it. talking about, what was it, like, the spectrum, right? The spectrum of light or whatever. Yeah, he's on the spectrum. And then all of a sudden he's like, oh shit, I just realized there's more to the spectrum. There's radiation. Gamma rays. Ah! He makes a homemade radiation suit. It looks Out of so his good. shower curtain, I think? Yeah, duct tape. And duct tape. It's fine. It's, look, there's too many syllables in this title, it's not good. This is just all random fun stuff I'm pulling out that happened in the movie. Oh, um, the G- the, well, yeah, the William Thompson grave. They have his birth year and death year on there, which happened to be the phone number for that geologist they called. Oh, I don't know how they got my phone number. Boy, that's a coincidence. You're right. That's all that is, is a coincidence. Well, here, here's the thing. No one says that's the geologist's phone number. I, I thought no, they, they heavily do. implied they, it. Oh, yeah, they, they heavily like imply a little it. Camera oh, highlight. Yeah. I guess they, they never say. We I guess this, this could be another. And it turned out to could, be the geologist. They never say that. This could be another John lie. Yeah, yeah the, it's a heavily insinuated. Well, actually, what if I remember what the what they do is they show the the grave with the numbers. <laughs> and then they kind of like blur out part of like the numbers on the left and then you get the phone number well no it was it was all eight digits it was the four years of his birth the four uh, the four numbers of his death but there's something highlight it there's something blurred but think, out on the left and i think it's an additional number that would further disprove possible i think all they did is i think the ge- the geologist guy was like i don't know how they got my number and then they cut back to that and apply this was his they number am- Yes. Like, oh However, yeah. I don't think it's instead his of we just looked you right. up. No, that would be funny. I I kind of no, think. Yeah. Um, uh, who's okay? So God, there's just there, it's like an incredible amount of rabbit hole bullshit that they just keep going down. Explain to me why we need. Okay, I could understand why they have the geologist. I guess because they want someone to come on to explain why there would be crystals. Yeah, there's something, there's something in the dirt. that goes with Johns. There's something in the dirt that uh, the Doctor Rita Miller. But why they also have on what's it? Uh, Boaz Kaminsky, who is the cultural secretary from the Glendale Social Outreach Society. So at a certain point, you just want people who will talk to you and your thing. Someone who you can cl- show as some kind of expert or show a title. Figure. Like, oh, see, this guy is blah 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 blah. So he knows shit. And he's the one who says it could be perceived that you two did this to gain attention. And John says, no, we saw a phenomenon and we wanted to document it and share it and share this experience with people. What's wrong with that? And Kaminsky says, well, then why did you portray yourselves in the recreations? Which then I'm like, 
Okay, now we know this. Uh, ugh, God, it's just so weird. Here's my thing, though. You know why I per portrayed myself in the recreation? I don't have money to pay for someone else to do Fair it. Fair enough. <laughs> Theater kids will do anything for free. Whoa, okay, that's how you got on that list. <laughs> That's how that's how you get on this, man. Um, near the end of the movie, it uh, starts Levi and John. They're okay. If you are trying to present this, okay. First question: Who made this? Who made this? I mean, in the in the in the in the John. logic of the film, John, who you think John made well, this and pr put it out there? They were making it to. They were making it no, together. Okay, I should say who finished then, this, edited it, put it together, and is now selling it. You think it's still John? John. Yeah. Yeah. The reason I don't know, I'm not entirely convinced, is because of the pieces in here where they leave in, like, Levi calling John out for fabricating evidence, like the snake skin, uh, the crystals. He's basically say the the receipt for the book. And they do, but I just wonder if that's... Well, if, is if that part wrong. of the documentary, or is that yeah, just I wonder, what happened and we're seeing it? Like, what we see as the audience of the actual movie, not the documentary. I, I think it's peppered with both. I think we're seeing what's actually so you're, happening. You're seeing what's happening, you're seeing the documentary recreations, and you're also seeing little flashbacks to, like, their childhood. Which is so weird. Yeah, I... these That's interesting takes. I, from, I was thinking what I was seeing was... The good film portion of this are recreations that they've done. That's not reality. Those are recreations, okay? The home lower grade footage, like of home movie cams of crystal raising, that was stuff they had shot, but that's not a recreation. That that actually quote unquote happened. And then you have the documentary part, and then you have the childhood home movie parts. And so I'm thinking that some John has given this all this material or sold all this material to someone else and they have put it together outside of him i would say if he could have got like a decent little check for the material yes but if he's not actually getting paid well enough by his standards for it then he's not going to let anyone else twist the narrative that he's already created that could be too i think money can get him past his asshole controlling nature but it'd have to be a decent chunk of money because he's he doesn't think he's a bad guy. There's even the part where Levi is doing like a couple of different takes talking about the chemist, saying that the chemist's wife went to the same high school as John, and then they may say, no, you're making too much noise, jumping rope, do it again. No, you're, you're, just, you're just picking yeah, up lenses, doing it again. And he's like, <laughs> uh, okay, the, the chemist's high school has the same name as the first street of the symbol that John saw. And I'm like, so he, but they leave it in there as an inconsistency. And I yeah. don't see how John would let that go if he was in control of this. Well, he's also bad at it, this. He, yeah, they suck at it. But that's also why I think like, no, we were just, we, we, the audience of something in the dirt are just watching them try to make this. I thing. agree with Kenny. Uh, the Apple take was the best take. Oh, though. for sure. They, at one point, we see them quickly get on the <laughs> internet to start doing research and they, they go to Reddit because <laughs> that's where you go for all your internet research. At some point, let's see, what, what other crazy shit is happening? Jo John starts measuring everything, which, you know, makes him look really dumb, I think. The tape player, when they got the tape player, when it's, when they were started playing it, did either one of you go, uh, Klaatu, Rakta, Rata, Nikto, because that's, I'm like, oh, oh here no, we go. No, no. no, you mustn't read from the book. But, uh, but at the, after, after the tape player parts where I had the note that said, this is just a movie about burnouts trying to explain why they never really tried to better themselves yes. by being deep. Yes. Like, gravity is holding me down. Yes. Ugh. God, and then let's see. We get the 1908 on the t on the knuckles and on the tape. We, we find out about the weird church group mental health as a teen from Levi. Weird church group is John. Let me tell you a, 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 a dark thought I had while watching this movie. A lot of them. So the uh, you t you mentioned it before that Levi's uh, throughout the movie is talking about he wants to leave the city. He wants to be done. He wants to move away. And so then this this comes after the scene where John has explained his whole doomsday religion that if everything's going to end anyway what's the problem with death what's the problem with genocide <laughs> and, and, and leave us like okay Whoa. so little hitler so as 
Levi is like filming himself saying that like in a few weeks, I'm going to get out of this city. We just need to tell John, which is awkward. And then he drops his phone as he's recording himself, ta- videoing himself. And then it falls and hits the ground from the balcony. So if we say that Levi is dead and we know how controlling and pathological that John is, is it possible then that for the sake of this documentary, and because he really doesn't want Levi to leave, that John would have gotten angry and like pushed Levi off of something to kill him. I think John killed Levi. Okay. No, he wouldn't have gotten away with it. He's stupid. Stupid people get away. It's with It's early stuff in the, the investigation, time. Daniel. He's not dead. He's also. He's up. He's I dead, don't. So. I go back and forth on that. I'm not trying to overcomplicate the movie that they already tried to overcomplicate within the movie. I'm saying he's dead. There's zero evidence that he's dead. There's. There's zero evidence okay, that he's not dead. Okay, there's a photograph of him mangled, which I paused on to look at it, and it's it's uh-huh. a, it's it's like he had fallen from many 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 highs. Yes. In my head, I'm going, where'd that photo come from? Uh-huh. Blood is really red and fresh. And, and and you look at him like, I can tell, basically, this looks like a puppet. This is a mannequin puppet. It's not a real body. And I'm, But then I'm thinking, well, if they found it later, maybe animals got to it and started chewed it up a bit. But no, then he would have been scattered. So I'm like, this looks a little bit fabricated to me. But that could, that I don't could just be a cause that real... it's a movie. And I don't even think that's a real photo what you're seeing is like in in john's mind oh damn i mean how he's in, envisioned it no i'm not saying that levi's dead because of that picture i'm saying i think john killed levi and he's maybe he's something in the dirt <laughs> i don't think john at that certain point would have been okay with levi just leaving like he thinks so little of levi but he needs levi to validate his smartness and with Levi pushes back and basically says, you're crazy, I'm getting out of here. Like, John, John's not going to take that. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if John's ex-husband was dead. Well, he's not. He's been paying. Well, that's what they tell us. No, you see it. I, I don't know anything. What they We see what they want us to see throughout this whole movie. But you also see they, shit they don't want you to see. If the whole thing is the documentary, then the whole they thing's want us not to go the ahead documentary. and see. But if it was. But it's not. Well, I don't think it is, but I'm saying we, we've got... You might know that. I, I don't know that. It's yeah. it's weird. Kenny, I can go from your point of view where the, the, the movie part of this is what we'll say actually is occurring and it's not the recreation. That I can watch this movie and have, and that makes perfectly good sense. I can go on my weird little tangent where I look at this and go, it's a recreation, but they wanted it to do this because they don't have enough of the phenomenon so they've had to add social drama to it in order to have an actual story and actual something to flesh Ooh, out the time. Because right. you take That's out more interesting. Yeah, you, yes, Daniel, because you take out any you take out the social conflicts, you take out their relationships, you don't have anything really to talk about except for we saw a ashtray glow in the dark and fly up a couple inches. It kind of uh, reminds me of that documentary about Banksy, Exit Through the Gift Shop, which might not have actually been a documentary at all, because it's about this guy who was going around uh, filming hours and uh, hundreds and hundreds of hours of footage uh, surrounding all these street artists, and eventually he meets Banksy and they become pals, and he decides to do a movie on Banksy, but at no point is this person editing the footage or anything, and it's sort of a meta documentary. There's a lot of... uh, discussion over whether it's even a documentary at all or if it's just a movie by banksy or even if banksy's involved at all but Can't prove that guy was banksy but uh, the stuff he does you can be like yeah that's banksy i mean can you what even is a banksy exactly banksy could be many people yeah but it kind of reminded me of that a little bit uh to be clear i like this movie because it makes me hate it <laughs> but i don't hate it i don't hate the movie itself i hate i just hate, I hate these characters i just hate john yeah john sucks levi levi's fine sucks in his own wa- way but he could I don't potentially think he sucks. be in his own way but he could potentially be fine john levi left to his own devices would be fine yeah he died well no but he floated like, away into the sky no- daniel when he was left to his own devices. If there's devices. no John, if there's no John, then Levi is fine. But if there's no Levi, John is still 
bad person who would find who would find a Levi. At least it took John a little bit to open up his badness to Levi, though. He he doesn't just lead with that's true. Badness. That's true. Did you guys know about Point Nemo before this movie? Yeah, the most yeah isolated spot on Earth. Yeah, the they ocean. gave the coordinates on the film, so I quickly typed them in to Google and I'm like, okay, that's accurate for Point Nemo. But then John says he flipped it and he got a location in the desert next to where they live. Now, when I did that, I could not get anywhere in California. Well, there's also the part where during the documentary part of the movie where Levi or where John says, yeah, I may have gotten some of my factors and numbers wrong. And that's just one of them because he's dumb. I don't know. Listeners, if you've plugged it in and you figured out where in California those coordinates would have made sense, let us know. I could not make it make sense. I, it was either in the middle of the ocean or up towards Canada. It's just one of those things where someone is looking so hard for something to mean something specific for their narrative, so then everything starts to point to that. Yeah, because they're searching for purpose. They're just grasping. I still, though, can't believe he was going to eat the cactus fruit. Well, he would eat it because he knows there's nothing wrong with it. Right, but if I'm the first person to eat an interdimensional fruit thing and die from it, then boy, that's a great way of dying. And then they try to say there's a Morse code thing in it. That was fucking (laughs) stupid. That was incredible. (laughs) And that footage is shown in the normal movie, which makes, and that's why I lean more towards that portion is the recreation footage for, for oh, like that scene it. in particular because it's like beautifully in frame the, the the dash the dots of the seeds of this right but fruit. if that was part of the documentary it would not be beautifully in frame well it's part of the recreation right. no i don't disagree well if it was part of the recreation it definitely wouldn't be no it is no it's not it was because the, they had time to set they're up not, the money they're not the, good the, at this they're not good they at this ha- they're but the people they're they having hired, someone help them. They're not paying these people. I don't people, know if you can get. But they're having someone that, help them. I, you think you can get someone good at that for not paying them? It's an office situation. We never actually get to meet the the office people filming the people in the office. But you do. Like, like I said, that really you, you, that iconic you didn't watch shot. The last season of The Office. Well, no, I was gonna say like until the end, you get to say like, "Hey, don't hit on his wife." Okay, like that that big iconic shot of Levi poking at the fire, John jumping in the air all excited with the camera. Someone had to take that shot. And that's the best looking shot in this entire thing that we watched. So at some point they had some production value. Maybe they did manage to sell it to a company to help like, you know, finish it up and make it look all nice cuz you know, you can do a documentary about anything these days. So I just realized uh we're we're doing what we're doing is now three idiots talking about a thing. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is uh But I did my research yeah, on Google, Daniel. I think I hey. at a certain point I said I'm just going to pretend I'm I'm going to pretend that this movie knows what it's talking about because I don't care. They've gone down so many rabbit well, holes. Well, that's a like, mistake cuz there's no way this movie no, like on purpose doesn't know what it's talking about. Well, it's like all those things that John spouts out there are people that believe a lot of those things. Math exists. So <laughs> well, like, well, hold easy. on, hold on. Easy. Stop, 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 stop. Prove yeah. it. <laughs> you don't need equations on this flat earth of ours. Come on. Maybe one of the best lines in the movie, though, uh, was uh, speed is fine, but accuracy is final. Wyatt Earp said that. And Michael Scott. I don't remember why he said that, but it's like, yep, pull out a line. I said it to you. That was when they went and traveled out to that random empty house in the desert and found. And found. The, what, what, the, what was that? Another, like, tra- it's a, it's a, it's like a number station. Yeah, and we, uh, John has been geocaching throughout this movie, so that's that's One important. One of their geocaches thing, it's, they find a, a quartz on a hill, and inside the quartz is a piece of paper with a website on it, and then they go to the website, I'm like, wait, what? Is that where they find the city the planner, center, dude? That's the that Thompson? rabbit hole. I'm like, wait, what? Yeah, and then Levi does a geocache by himself without John and finds a skull a in the water skull. and those crystals oh, growing yeah, out of it. Daniel. That was yeah. cool. That was cool. I was like, I'm not even sure it's real. And I'm like, it doesn't matter. You're not supposed to take a geocache, guys. You're supposed to leave it. Well, John's been taking you take all geocaches of geocaches all the time. Yeah, and look, I just, my favorite thing about this movie was they keep shitting on each other's ideas when they're all dumb and they keep thinking, no, my my dumb idea is for sure the right one and you're fucking stupid. And John does it more than Levi. Levi gets into that game a little bit, but it's just hilarious every time. They're so sure. Like, you guys have been so wrong every single time, but you're going to keep shitting on each other. You guys aren't friends. Mm. 
Uh, by this point, however, they probably are business partners. So you gotta you gotta find a way to finish this thing somehow. Although John has started snooping a lot more into Levi's shit, John just helps himself to Levi's apartment with the justification that that's where the anomaly is going on. So he gets to go in there whenever he wants, drink his beer, drink his beer, snooping his stuff, find out that maybe Levi accidentally or on purpose gave his sister some drugs and she fell off a building to her death possibly Maybe. that's sad and he's alert that's the this is the whole you're allergic to success i'm glad you're leaving unemployment fascist church donor weird stuff like real conflict between the two of them like they that's why i'm like i could see john killing him at some point uh but again the whole thing it might all be the documentary like we keep saying where you know conflict is interesting to the public what if Hear me out. What if... No. Okay. John straight what up if... goes into Levi's apartment. No, no, no. Hear me out. Hear me out. What if... No. And then Ryan talks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. He straight up goes into his apartment and Levi's there and John's like, what are you doing here? I thought you were supposed to be at work. And Levi's like, I'm not working. What the fuck are you doing here? My apartment. Oh, well, uh, my carbon monoxide alarm's going off. Like, do what everyone else does when that happens. Take the batteries out of it. It'll yeah, stop. Open your door. Open the windows. <laughs> What's the problem? I would say maybe carbon monoxide was a problem. Uh, but I wanted you guys to know that when that whole scene happened where he just comes into the house and Levi's there, that I, that made me uncomfortable. So what if... All of their kung fu captured on the home video kind of made me uncomfortable, but... <laughs> <laughs> were they doing push-ups at some point? Uh, I, I don't think? know. They were de- definitely doing... Um... Karate, just for funsies, I think. Because, you know, you're bored. Nothing's happening. That's just, also, that's just bo- no, that's just boys being boys, you know. Boys being boys. We also had, uh, we forgot to mention Scrotum's uh, window prop. I guess we could also throw up the crystal ashtray, which has been levitating and then falling to the ground. It does it one more time at the very end, only it smashes. At that point, they've had their big confrontation with each other. Levi confronting John, saying, you're fabricating all this shit. And then John saying, well, how about you come up with some better rabbit holes to come down? Oh, you can't because you're a fuck up. You're stupid. You know, nothing in your, they're both saying each other, nothing in your lives have worked out. You're incompetent. But then they kiss and make up for some. Yeah, by John offering Levi one of his own beers. It's like one of Levi's own beers. It's (laughs) amazing. It's the movie the whole time, though, is also like everything surrounding Levi has been shit falling. Like, again, he's the gravity one, but he's he, at one point during one of his little big I'm on drugs moments. Like, yeah, a dream where like I fell out of an airplane or got thrown out of an airplane and brought down to this earth and it holds me down. And I didn't ask to be thrown out of the airplane. And then his sister falls to the death. And then it's implied that he floats away. Well, you see that sick, when he gets sick trapped outside right, the so window. Kenny, if this is what actually if the. If that part of the film is what actually happened, then we see him floating in front of the moon. Well, we see a, a uh-huh. body just kind of, ah, in, fr- uh-huh. in front of the moon, which is what I say. But it's so weird because if this, when John thinks that the apartment has been flooding with radiation, that's what he said, and he makes his bathroom radiation suit, um, Fallout, Fallout 4, very proud of you. He shuts all the windows, all the doors, even though we've established in the canon of this that the apartment gets super hot and overheats, which which they present as causing hard drives and film that they've already done to melt, and which is why they need to come back and do these recreations, do these reshoots. Right, convenient. In my head, if this is a reshoot, they wouldn't need to do this as a reshoot because they would already have it. But if it's really happening, then... Or is it what John saw but couldn't film? And so then he went and said, I need you to recreate this. I don't have it on film because I was watching my friend float away into the atmosphere, obviously. But this is what happened, and this is what we're going to recreate. I think it's got to be both. I mean, because you're not all... uh, You would would think they would always have a camera going, but they're not professional. Like, I don't know where they even got the gear that they got with the income they have. Like, I still assume Levi stole all that camera equipment from one of the job sites. So you would think like, okay, we're going to have to recreate some of this because the camera's not always going to be rolling. But having the whole, yes, the hard drives all got melted gave us a perfectly acceptable excuse. To be like, nope, this is totally how it happened. We had to redo it because, yeah, we did film it. We're not amateurs. We had cameras going all the time. We didn't fuck up. They just melted. Yeah. They've got two excuses to have uh, recreation now because they only had five minutes of footage of a floating ashtray. I had three questions. I have now have 
four, but I had three questions, and we've kind of answered most of them. The first question, who made this? Uh, you guys seem to be on the fence that this is something that John finished on his own. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Kenny? Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm yeah. going to take the stance that there is another party involved in this outside of John. That wasn't hired? Like a no, third like, that partner? was not hired. Like someone else obtained this footage and has put this together and... And now this is one of the black tapes. Kind of, yeah. Like, and this mm. this documentary mm. is not really a documentary about the phenomenon. It's the documentary about these two guys in this situation, and that's the way a third party has presented it. And and Levi's disappearance. Okay. Sec- my second question that we had to deal with is: Is Levi dead? No. Daniel says no. I think at minimum he's he just left, vanished. But I think you he's think, dead. He, he was you out there he- smoking. He had an epiphany. So. This is it. I'm donezo here. And then he just fucking up and left. Yeah, and then John comes up with the story, oh, this is why he's not he's no longer in the yes. documentary. Uh-huh. John's John's dumb, but I don't know if he's so bold and dumb to say like, oh no, he's yeah, he died. This is what happened. For because all it takes is Levi showing up at some point. Well Levi's not gonna show back up. If the documentary were to make money, guaranteed Levi would be like, yeah, I'm not dead. What the fuck are you talking about? I don't I think he would. I, I, don't, I don't. I think he's washed his hands of it. I think he is dead. My third question, <laughs> is any of this real? If he, was, if he was dead, there would be an interview with the police in the documentary. Not if John was still in control of it. Why would there not there be? Should be? There would be like a cut to a police report or an autopsy report or like something other than that photo. Instead, what you, what you get is just him saying, oh, the cops gave me his ashes. Which is weird. So that's why I'm like, okay, maybe he's just disappeared. Because like, why don't they just give him the ashes? They've got no, he's got no ground. Right. Like, He'd legal be given a, like a, a pauper's right funeral. Ashes. <laughs> you scatter that ashes into the harbor or something, right? I'm sure that's how that yeah. works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, Levi, I, no... or John is a pathological liar. Yeah. You can't trust him. Yeah. But that's, I also think he would do a murder. I think I, uh, it's possible. Okay. I mean, I could see it either way, but in my head, I'm like, hmm, he killed Levi and he's trying to wrap it up in this thing. Cause like, hey, what's a better way to make this thing stand out even more? Oh, he fucking died from it. This isn't, look at the danger we put ourselves in because of this. But then they straight up say there was no evidence of the Triangle Boys. And I thought that was funny. So sad. And that and I think it's also when he says his figures were off. I'm like, you don't, <laughs> you don't say. say. A little bit. <laughs> In the logic of this movie and what was presented, are you convinced that any part of it was real of their experience? Yeah. 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 Kenny, no. no. Daniel's yes. I'm going to say n- I'm, I'm with yep. Kenny on Denny this. Denny is no, no. Daniel is yes. And I'm no. Wow. Well. I, I still think John is controlling the entire narrative. The fact that John was the first one to see the phenomenon and had to call Levi in there. And I feel like Levi is very susceptible to like Levi wants to believe in these things uh, because again, Levi needs purpose for why his life is. So he's, he's happily wanting to live. Like that's the reason he puts up with John's bullshit for so long, even though he doesn't completely agree with John with a lot of things. Levi needs a purpose. Levi needs something to latch on to because he has had a shit If life. you were going to make something up, you would make something up more interesting than a floating I ashtray would. that projects triangles on a wall it was the heat of the moment the they didn't it wasn't floating but it was refracting the light it did it started like, floating oh. when, when levi came in that's what they told us this happened but if this whole thing is a documentary and recreation then for all we know the floating aspect was added to it what if they're like oh man look at that crazy light like so freaky oh i thought it was floating for a second because the light was deceptive sitting over there by the window but it was just sitting by the window so you're oh, but what you're saying floating? that was a recreation or re- recreation? <laughs> it's recreational floating <laughs> a recreational floating I'm saying who, how can we, how can we know what is and isn't? When you're seeing a recreation, because they show you some of the recreation of the floating, it looks shitty. Right, but here's the thing. That's... Here's the right. thing, though. This entire movie was something that was just made, so they chose to make things shitty. So who's to say in the context within the movie they couldn't have chose to make things look sh- shitty to say this was our actual footage? I can go shoot something right now that's going to look shitty as fuck and be like, hey, this is my shitty footage of it actually happening. So you've got this, You've got different CG people working on your thing. Yes. It could, no, it could be or the same it's CG just an, people. It's like, a, okay, it's if it's, it's the same CG person, CGI. He's, it's not the fine, he's not final just going to say, hey... 
this shit's all fake. Yes. Yes, that's where I'm coming. I'm coming down to the part where John and Levi are not making an actual documentary about everything. They are making a mockumentary and then just trying to sell that. Okay, but they want you to believe right. it's true. Now that, okay, I can believe you that. Look at it, then everything makes sense about this movie if you, if you look everything at it from right. that point. And you know what? I mean, that's basically it, what that, this movie is. Correct. It's making fun <laughs> yeah. of, yes. Now, in that scenario, though, I don't think Levi's right. dead. Because it's all it's all but, made for drama and to just get by maybe it. I'm a little because hmm, uh, I I've heard an interview with the guys that made the movie and their a lot of their stuff is uh, Lovecraftian in nature yes so that so I think something happened you know and it's just unexplainable let's have this conversation is this a horror movie yes I mean what, what yeah. aspects of as opposed to stupid people are scary. <laughs> scary. Um, people scary. Peter Pan scared me really the, bad. And they pose the biggest threat to society that there is. I mean, you're not wrong there. I mean, no, it's two people stuck in a tense situation with something we don't know how dangerous it is or trying to figure it out. Is it, like, this isn't like a jump scare monster more. This is, like, is that's basically like you ask, like, is cosmic horror horror? Okay, and so well, it's in the cosmic horror, absolutely. And this is... Definitely, I would I would throw this in cosmic horror. In fact, the the movie I was going to recommend was Color of Out of Space. Sure, I ask it only because I mean, like like we say, there's no there's no jump scares, there's no there's no rocking around killer. It is very much a human being presented with the unexplainable, trying to make uh-huh. sense of it. However, in a traditional cosmic horror, that pursuit of trying to explain it would drive you insane. And I would and say I it would did. Argue, yeah, that John is definitely there, and Levi leaves before he gets to that full breaking point. Like you ask if it's horror, I have, I think, one of the most broad sense of of horror in general. I think it's a wide open genre. I think, I think anything could be horror if it really makes you uncomfortable enough. Yeah, but I mean, social about... interactions on screen make you <laughs> uncomfortable if there's unresolved tension. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Those are y- those yours are might be a little bit to me, too but broad. Like, <laughs> I, I would say it is, but I don't. I don't like I mean, to be not, like one, you want to be part Magnolia of the horror family. Horror, come and join right? it. I mean, oh god, I'd be terrified. But like, you're asking if this is horror because of the situation. Like, would you ask if innkeepers? Well, that is ghosts. Horror? Is it? But is it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is. It is. But but the majority of the movie, though, you don't necessarily know that. So if they had shown something just in the last shot, like oh, there was a thing, then it becomes horror. Because I feel dread throughout this entire experiment. But the, but the dread I'm feeling is because of these two assholes, not because of what's actually going. The on. The horror is not the unexplainable thing. The horror is it's John. The dumb people. It's John. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Uh, I don't like John. No, he's a great character to hate. We've been getting a lot of those lately, I think. Oh, yeah, name name two. Uh, Catherine. Kathleen. Kathleen, shit. And then uh, there was someone else who I like, they pissed me off so much in a movie, they did such a good job, and they pissed me off, I don't remember what it was. I can go back to an older one, though, that uh, lady that always shoots in the mist. But that wasn't lately. I, I said lately, and I can't think of what the other one was. Mm-hmm. Couldn't even name two. How embarrassing. Yeah, uh, Frank. From Last of Us? No, I just threw out a oh, name. Oh, you just threw out a name? Okay. <laughs> it just happened to be... <laughs> What have you got against Frank's? <laughs> Sinatra. He uh, hates bears. Womanizer. Yeah, everyone knows that. Ah, this pretentious ass movie. Um, so I don't think it was pretentious. It, it, it's weird. So I'm gonna go with maybe in the maybe it's pretentious in the runtime. It's the whole thing is like 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 I said earlier. Like it's not really tangible. We spend almost two hours and like did something actually happen? I don't think so. The fact that they call this a buddy comedy, I never. They call it that. Yeah, the official IMDb synopsis is Maverick filmmaking duo Justin Benson and Aaron Moorhead offer up a twisted reflection of our paranoid times in this inventive mix of buddy comedy and sci-fi thriller. To be clear, that is actual. That's the actual the guys who played, synopsis? The guys who played John and Levi. They are the writer and yeah. director of this. Made so during this, COVID, I believe. They're pro- yeah. So like, it's not I, two idiots a- observe a supernatural occurrence and rather than call in any intelligent people to help investigate, proceed to investigate themselves, fueled by conspiracy theories, a desperate need for divine purpose, and impaired thinking. Daniel, yours is better. Well, it's not that. No, yours is better. Yeah. And to be clear, these guys are great. I have actually seen other stuff they've been involved in. And no, they've, they've got good stuff. Like, I like this movie. The fact that it upsets me so much, I think it's great. Because I'm just like, oh, you assholes. Like, why'd you put me through this? But, uh, you know, it kept me there. Are there any other it was like, movies 
are books where they that you would recommend with a we'll say unreliable narrator where we can't be sure if what we're being told or shown is real or not i would say that uh, banksy documentary i mentioned would you potentially say well i don't know if you finish it ryan but that night of the mannequins that one as long as all the kids actually died in the story i would for an uh yeah i guess i'd agree with that yeah because i mean what he is unreliable narrator what he's presenting uh, the murder of happening. the murder of roger Ackroyd. oh oh yeah yeah agatha christie I know that one uh i'm gonna go with i believe it's the rats in the walls by hp lovecraft the last house on needless street by uh, uh catriona ward the pretty popular book like last year or so that had a pretty unreliable narrator uh i'm thinking of ending things which i think i added onto our watch list I don't, I don't recall if that was put in Frailty is an unreliable. Frailty. That Frailty is a good Frailty example. Frailty is a yes. hell of a good one. I I like unreliable narrator stories. They're frustrating until you figure out like, oh yeah, this is maybe not actually happening. I wouldn't say Haunting a Hill House, but I'd say that We've Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. I'd say that's a decent that's example. That's what he'd say. There's, I, I, there's a lot of good books because it's easier to do in a book, I think. Like A Head Full of Ghosts by Paul Trimbley. That was another one. It is easier to do in a book because that's just that's that's what that's the perspective you have, right? Right, they're forcing it. Yeah. I'm trying to think of good movie examples with an unreliable narrator, like where they're in, intentionally misleading you is when it gets even sure. worse. Not just like I'm a fucking. Would crazy you say guy. Primal Fear? I don't know if I remember that one. It's such a generic sounding name. Primal that Fear. That one is Richard Gere and who? Oh God, who's the second actor in? Fight Club. Laura Lenny. Not Brad Pitt, but the other one. Oh. Ed Norton. Edward Norton. Edward Norton. Uh, would you say that both of the uh, Knives Out movies are unreliable narrators? They're, until yeah, the, until the summation at the end? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they... I think those movies themselves... I don't know if that's an unreliable narrator, though. I think the movies themselves are intentionally misleading. So when the movie is doing it, but not the character, that's a different thing, I think. If it's one person telling us the story strictly from their perspective and they're intentionally misleading us... Hmm. Or it's just being filtered through their insanity. Right, so I think that that's close, but maybe not the same thing. I mean, if it was, if like the prestige was all told just I, from the perspective I was thinking of Christian about the Bales. Theory, yeah. If the prestige was told, I, not even just him, because they're both fucking with each other with the journals. Right, but the biggest unreliable part is just the fact that, you know, spoilers. There's two, there's two of them. Two, it's yeah. two of them. Yeah. yeah. The real Lindsay Lohan situation. I didn't. I wasn't sure if I wanted to say uh, prestige, but now I wish I had because now you said it, and I could have been the one to say it. You could have been the one. Like say that's it now, close, and I'll I don't edit think it so quite... it makes it sound like you said it first, and Kenny's the idiot. <laughs> so uh, in the prestige, <laughs> I can make myself. I can make myself seem like an idiot all by myself. Thank you very much. <laughs> I don't need any help from you. <laughs> um. So, uh, <laughs> so you guys like this movie? Yep. Something you would watch again? Well, I've watched it twice because. Mm. Just to make it make sense in my brain, I don't, I don't think I'm gonna watch it a third time any uh, soon. But maybe once I forget about it. I like that they have it tagged as comedy because uh, I was laughing at some of it, but they officially tagged it as comedy, so it was on purpose, and I love that. Um, I don't, I'm not gonna watch this movie again to be happy. I will watch this movie again to be like, all right, let me hear some stupid shit and let me see these guys spiral because that's the point. They purposefully put these guys up there. These you're not trying to be these guys. You don't want to be these guys. <laughs> I wouldn't mind being Levi. And they do it in such, oh, you want to have accidentally killed your sister and, maybe you know, get hard on, like, well, drugs, as long get as alcohol it's an alcohol in California, and uh, expose just, yourself you know, to children. I just like his whole vibe, is the thing, right? His little surfer boy California vibe? Yeah. Yeah. No, just it, yeah. just sitting in your room, just pl str not really even playing the guitar, just playing with the guitar, you know? Playing with, playing with yourself. It's just something I've always room. thought, like, you. you know, I could see myself just doing that. Yeah. I could see you playing with There's a guitar in uh -huh. uh, you could why don't where's my guitar? Why don't you have it? I don't fucking why would I? I have no uh, musical skill. <laughs> it's just gain and dust probably yeah. at dad's house. Go grab it. Be, live that life yeah. now, Daniel. Five point never, never too, too late. late. Start I wanna, doing hard I, drugs. I wanna sit on a balcony that you get to through a window and just smoke in the open smoke. air. Yeah. Minus the smoking. It loses its romance yeah. pretty quickly. And the, you would look so cool, though, if you smoked. All right, I'm going to start smoking. <laughs> Hell yeah. 5.9 out of 10. Where are you guys putting it? That's way too low. I can, I can understand I why agree. a general audience wouldn't like this, because it, it, it's, not, a clear, uh, it's but... not clear what happened, and it's not... It's not clear if anything happened. <laughs> right, and maybe nothing has happened, and right? And I, I get what you're saying, right? You're saying, much like John, you are smarter than 
99% of the people out there, and that's why you get this, and they don't, and the, they wouldn't. Well, I think it. through this discussion, we've established that none of us got it. Uh, but that we was all the, got it, but, and we all like, got it Ryan, in different ways, is what I think is. But happened. if Ryan was like, right. John, Ryan would be like, oh yeah, I fully, I, this is what happened, and I fucking <laughs> understand it, and you guys are stupid for not. I understand that this movie, surface level, is supposed to seem fucking dumb and convoluted. Yeah. But when you actually look deeper, that's what the the filmmakers here were doing it's for a trap. us. They put it. They put us in this goddamn thing, <laughs> and we sit here and talk about DeVito it. Danny DeVito lobster trap coming at you. And, yeah. Right. It's the part where you got to understand. Just because the characters are dumb doesn't mean the movie isn't smart. No, I think the movie's smart. The mar- that's what I'm saying. So the movie, I think it did a very good job with these characters. Where I'm just like, I think I hate you guys, but also I don't. But also, John, I do hate you. Levi, you're fine, but. What happened? Are you dead? Who's gone? Ah, did anything actually happen? I don't think so. What? 5.9? That's too low, I'm going to say. A 7.2. Okay. Sure, that's Ooh, a good score. Cool. I get Now, I, Ryan did his list of questions. Uh, I've just got the one question. Where does this sit in the Croc cinematic universe? So, that's a goblin door. One and done. All right, good. Yep, goblin portal. The squirrel was actually a goblin in disguise. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and ghouls, spookies and kookies, I like kookies, you've made it. You're now two days away from the start of our Spooktober Marathon! Womp womp womp! That's right, starting October 1st, going all the way through October 31st, we will have a new episode for you every single day. Starting off hot with 13 episodes covering the entirety of the Friday the 13th series, culminating with a Friday the 13th series recap on Friday the 13th in October. How spooky is that? That's super spooky. And that's the kind of heat we're bringing you. We're going to ride this choo-choo all the way through October, and then we're going to run right into season two, hitting you hard, fast. New content, better content. Maybe we get rid of a host for one of his really bad takes. Maybe we don't. I don't know. Maybe another car will hit the house in season two. Who knows? But thank you for tuning in, and see you on the other side of October. Well, 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 well. Uh, it's about time we uh, lock the door. We've solved this problem, fellas. We've got to the bottom of this movie. It's clear. We straightened it out for you. So if you didn't understand this movie before you got here, we hope that you you do now. As always, I've been your horrible Pythagorean bro host, Kenny. I am your favorite pizza gator, Daniel. I've been that door that just won't shut Ryan. And the butt that won't shit. Or quit. Or quit. I, that was a note I had somewhere. The butt that won't poop, I think, after he said the door that won't shut. <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, too many bye. syllables. That is too many syllables. Too many syllables, bro. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>